Hello, and welcome to Artfully Told, where we share true stories about meaningful encounters with art. I think artists help people have different perspectives on every aspect of life. All I can do is put my part out into the world. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. It doesn't have to be perfect ever, really. I mean, as long as you, you're enjoying doing it and you're trying your best, that can be good enough. Art is something that you can experience with your senses and that you just experience as, as so beautiful. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Artfully Told. I'm your host, Lindsay, and I am so very delighted to have as my guest today, Erica Johnson. Erica is an amazing human being, first and foremost, absolutely lovely person with so much to share and offer the world, and I'm so excited that she's here, but she is also an amazing artist and has not just dabbled, but become proficient in many different art forms, and she just brings a wealth of experience and expertise as well as perspective that is so unique. And so, Erica, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, I would love if you wouldn't mind sharing just a little bit about your background, maybe how you got involved in art in the first place and, you know, kind of where your career has has led you, if you don't mind. Sure. So... Basically, I do hair and skin for a living. It's something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to just sort of make a woman feel beautiful, not just on the outside, though, more or less on the inside as well, because we all know beauty fades. (laughs) And, you know, I've been doing it since 2009, and it's what started as just me doing like hair and skin I kind of dabbled into working with models and traveling and then you know years later I mean I became self-employed and my business has turned a little more into like a ministry so I it's it's really cool to see how God works in my business and how He sends like-minded people to, whether it's to strengthen me or me to strengthen them through encouragement from God or just a word of prayer. And leading up to that, I, since 2020, have had just a really hard, hard circumstances, obviously with the COVID situation, but I've had significant amount of losses in my life from February last year leading up to currently September this year. I've lost 12 people, family and friends. And so with being in support groups and just in different Bible studies, I decided to just sort of get my hands into photography and metal smithing. And so I've been taking a couple of classes away just to sort of express um, my grief but also make sure it glorifies God. I I just sort of use art to express my pain, but also with the elements, whether it be scripture inspired or just whatever God leads me to, but I express it through art, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I know, like you've mentioned, you've had quite a bit of loss over the last couple of years, and I'm sure that has informed a lot of your life, of course, but I think it's really interesting that you've chosen to use art as an outlet to express what you need to, what you need to express, but then also that you have chosen to do it in forms that have deep meaning for yourself, but then I think also could really maybe help other people as they're struggling, uh, maybe as well, or just, you know, maybe they're past the struggling, but they're, they're trying to also go through the emotions. And I know, you know, we have talked a lot about how, if you have faith that there is something more and that there is intentionality, you can at least, (laughs) at least try to wrap your head around the concept of hope and you're one of the most hopeful people I've ever met. And I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind speaking to that, especially considering that you could have every right to kind of just throw your hands up and be done. 
but I'd love if you would share more about, you know, your, your reason for being able to be so hopeful and then also kind of how that's informed some of your work despite the pain, if you're willing. Sure. I don't know how to um, describe it the best way, but I, I can basically go off of just my daily relationship with God and how God has met me exactly where I am, even in the middle of the pain. And just perfect example of the metal piece in my uh, metal smithing class, we had to construct like a commemorative vessel and cast a piece that will go inside it. Well, I kind of struggled with commemorative vessel and I I really kept trying to make it go my way and you know put a perfect spin on it and just you know just trying to figure out where where do I fit in or just find my way and it's really interesting it was back in June earlier this year I decided to drive to the Weston um, State Park And I had just lost a dear pastor that I valued. And of course, my dad's birthday was this particular day. And then my grandma had also passed away. My uncle passed away within the same time frame. So as I'm driving to the Western Park, I just asked God to give me a sign, give me hope to make it through this day and you know I I see these three crosses on the side of the road anytime I drive but this particular day they literally like jumped out at me and I kind of just pondered and I'm like wow okay so as I get to the park I'm just sitting there just kind of listening to the wind and watching the birds fly around and I open my little book that is from my grief support book and as I open it I'm reading And it literally is speaking straight (laughs) to my heart's cry about the cross and how without the cross and Jesus dying on the cross, every person that I have lost, there would be no opportunity for me to ever be able to see them again. But because of Jesus dying on the cross, I will get to see them in eternity and they they won't be sick there will be no suffering there will be you know they'll just be made new and constantly over and over again with this little short grief journey it's been quite the i mean it's just god has been showing me the cross the cross and i guess in a way that's that's where my hope is is how God has just met me every step of the way. And even, even as I said before, with me trying to construct a commemorative vessel piece, making it perfect, or trying to go my own way, God has met me in the middle of that and reminded me that nothing is ever perfect, only Jesus is perfect, who died on the cross. And basically, like just really strengthening my faith because by nature, I'm naturally a planner. Things need to go my way. They need to go a certain way, but this faith walk is not that way. It is, that's truly to me, what God is showing me. That's what faith is. And if you're so concerned about your plans, you're never going to be open to God's plans that he has for us. And, and for me, like to trust in God's character, that God's character, one of his character traits that I always cling to is he is good. So it helps me to be hopeful that even though this is painful, the beauty that God gave us a savior who suffered so much, but died on the cross and, you know, left us with the Holy Spirit to guide us and comfort us. That that to me is more hopeful and reassuring. And the fact that literally it's becoming very essential to my life and just resting in God's promises. I mean, they, they truly have never returned void, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think your perspective is so helpful and beautiful in that way that that you are able to take 
you know, difficult situations, but still find beauty and hope despite them or, or even through them, kind of like you said, getting met where you are is really a powerful concept. You don't have to try to be anybody else or be in a different emotional state or anything. You're just, you're you. And that's, that's a beautiful thing too. And so I'm curious, obviously you have had multiple different art forms that you've pursued over the years, which is super cool. Was photography and also metalworking, were those always interests of yours or did they kind of develop later on or how did all that come about for you? Well, I, let's see, I've always loved to take pictures. I always kind of had like an interest in taking pictures, but I didn't really know how or like, I don't know. Hair and makeup was the main focus. So I, I just, it was always just kind of like, Oh, I'll try one day, but didn't really, you know, happen until the day after my um, father died. That's the first thing I grabbed. I went in his house downstairs and I picked up his cameras and I I don't know. I just cling to them so tightly. (laughs) And when COVID happened, um, I I just started practicing. I just started walking around and, you know, I just really was focusing on like, how can I, as I grieve, this is a very heavy cloud that I'm facing and I can't really see my way out. Everything is a blur. So I try to remind myself of like God's creation and I would go outside and take a picture of like the birds or whatever, just to keep that, even though I'm in this fog, but to keep that reminder that God's creation surrounding me gives me comfort that God is with me in a way, if that makes sense, because grief is a very lonely road. And as far as the metal smithing, I have an associate's degree in fashion design. And I really, I kind of did the dab and did alterations for people and this and that, but that really wasn't, I really wanted to be able to get my hands in like metal, like jewelry or whatever, wherever it would lead me. And so, you know, I, it took a while, but this, I just felt was the perfect time to enroll in a metal smithing class. I was always, if I go to trade shows, I would sit there and talk forever to people who made jewelry and I would just be so fascinated by it. And so, yeah, that's, I would always like sketch little jewelry pieces or cut out clippings of inspirations I liked, but I was just, I guess, waiting for the perfect timing to actually take a class or try it. Yeah. Well, and like you were talking about earlier, you you love helping women feel beautiful and confident. And so your business is kind of, you know, centered on that. But it to me, it seems like that is, ob- well, obviously as a makeup artist, that is an art role through and through. But it seems like even just taking care of, you know, whether that's a haircut or a facial or whatever, that's also kind of an art form in and of itself. I, I mean, I... I don't do those things, but I feel like that is absolutely the case. Do you, do you feel that way? Or is it kind of more like a little more routine for you on those kinds of things? No, I, I, I agree. I I feel that it is a form of art. It, it's always, especially doing hair. Yes. Because you don't, you, you're creating something and doing makeup or facial it's a it's a canvas you don't know what you're going to do until you're in front of the person you know and yeah getting to know the person and not everything works on every person but really taking that time and I personally I'm a personable person so I like that one-on-one personal approach because it really yeah. I can really see where the person's coming from and you can really just be in tune with them and know what may work and what doesn't work, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And and like you said, it's probably it's it's like improv every single time you get somebody for a haircut because it's <laughs> you don't necessarily know until they arrive. How cool. That's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe intimidating too. I mean it yeah. would be for me. <laughs> Yeah, it can be at times. (laughs) 
Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's also cool what you do. And I'd love to dive more into your photography because I know you have a specific sort of series that you've been working on and we can't wait to hear all about that. All right. So my my final project of the progression of grief, I basically, my first photo is just shattered, like an anger, just an anguish. It is inspired from back when my father first died. I got in a fight with a relative, my brother, and um, I was putting a mirror in the car and it cracked. And so I, for some reason, saved the mirror. And so it became my inspiration. And I went ahead and just hit it and it just cracked. And I just basically reenacted the anger that I felt from the beginning with my eyeliner smeared and I'm looking into the mirror like as a just a reflection of pain and just how lonely it feels. You know where to turn because of the family dynamics and almost losing hope, if that makes any sense. My second image is just like the compounding of like the tears have nowhere to go. It's it's very heavy. Every time the phone rings or a text message comes, somebody has died, you know, and it's it's like I feel like I'm going to explode and I'm alone. And the third um, image is just anxious anxiety because I feel like I am an utter despair and I'm at the end of my rope and I cannot take it anymore. And with that third picture, I did write a prayer in my grief journal of asking God to help me because I cannot cling to my own strength and I need support. And I do have a friend who is like a true answer to prayer. She, I managed to capture the photo with me and her walking and she knows the suffering that I've gone through of loss and just different circumstances in her life. We, our lives seem to parallel. She had no idea what I was going through, but she managed to send me a message on Facebook at right at that time when I had asked God about like to send, like give me strength. So I was able to lean on her as another believer to kind of like carry me through as well as my support group as well and with the support group and the support of her friendship I was able I'm able to look at my loved ones and look at those pictures as a sign of hope and the promise that I will see them again and really being thankful because they are they were truly a gift if that makes sense in the time that they were here on earth and just being thankful of my faith and the cross, because without the cross, I would not have the hope to see them again. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I'm so excited to see that project eventually. I hope I get to see it eventually, because I just think what you've captured is is so impactful and such a, it sounds like just a, a beautiful representation of of grief, but yet hope. And I just, one of the things that I have admired so much about you is your unwavering hope. And even when it gets extraordinarily difficult and just, I I can imagine there have been times when you've just felt so overwhelmed, but you continue to cling to truth and you continue to you don't give up. You continue to, to grow and learn and inspire. And I just think that that's You're just amazing. (laughs) You're so resilient. And I know it comes from your strong faith background. Well, I'm, I'm so excited, you know, for you and this journey. And I know it's not, not a fun one necessarily, but I think what you're doing is, is so, like I said, inspiring. And, and so I'm, I'm just curious, uh, do you, obviously, (laughs) obviously we're living in an odd time, but are there future plans that you have as far as, maybe, you know, continuing with the photography and metalwork and or with your business? Do you have any sort of things that you're looking forward to? Yes, I, I mean, I, I'm open to wherever God is like leading me because this is a new normal. So as I said earlier, I know that this pain is purposeful. 
I am hoping that it will form into a ministry and that hopefully I can be able to ex continue to express through arts and maybe it'll open doors. I'm not sure which doors, <laughs> but open more doors, hopefully into a ministry involving others and collaborating, whether it be that or having a online forum for people to, you know, read or see the pictures. Most importantly, my grief project was most real for me that it is okay to be broken. And I feel like in this society, we have to always appear like we have it all together. And that's not, that's not really healing or helpful. So I'm hoping in the future that it would get the attention of other people that it is truly okay to be broken because that's where your healing comes. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> well, I'm sure that there are some of our listeners who maybe are local, would love to help support your business and, or would just love to connect with you. Is there a way for them to do that? Yes, I I have a website. That's probably the best way to get a hold of me because Facebook, you're never going to, it's kind of hard to find. There's so many Erica Johnson. So <laughs> my website is www.ericajohnsonhairandmakeup.com. Perfect. Thank you. And then there are a couple questions that I love to ask my guests if you're okay, up for that. <laughs> Yes, yes, sure, sure. Awesome. Okay, so first of all, what is one change that you would love to see in the art world? And that is, I know, an extremely broad question, but essentially, what's one thing that you've noticed about, could be about, you know, an industry that you're currently involved in, or maybe it's about, you know, what you witness as being maybe something to change or essentially what is one thing that you really would love to see be different about the art world? I, I, I think a, a lot of times you see the beginning of something, the middle of something or the end of something, but you don't see all together, like the growth, if that makes sense. So I would have to say maybe like, in the arts, like the, the progression of growth and does it need to be perfect, more or less being open to going with the flow and being okay with, if I started, if I had the idea in my head of this, but it's starting to look like this, being okay, it being whatever it is supposed to be. Don't try to force it. Don't try to if it's going like this, then go with the flow, if that makes sense. Because truly, we are, I mean, to me, art reminds me of life. You think you're in control, but you're really not. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. I absolutely agree. And then, is there any particular art form that you have maybe always wanted to try but haven't dabbled in yet? What would that art form be? What would you like to try next? I would like to try uh, maybe ceramics. <laughs> I I just I just think it would be fun and therapeutic. Just really, you know, clay and forming something. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be a lot of fun and probably <laughs> super challenging. <laughs> or at least for me, it would be. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, and then my final question is. At the end of your life, if you were to be able to witness or participate in one art experience for the last time, what would you choose? Hmm. One art experience? I would say probably photography. And I say that because the little short journey that I've had with playing with a camera, even before taking a class, the many travels. I just love capturing the image and more or less, you really, it's all about light. And I love how it's all about light because really when you're going out searching and taking photos and looking, whatever you may capture, 
you're trying to get the light right, but also when you're looking through the lens, you're also seeing the light in others and whatever you're capturing. And I think that is a very beautiful thing because I don't know, we're just all, I don't know how to describe it basically, but I I would have to say photography basically. I love that. And I love your description of being able to see the light in people and that's just beautiful. Well, thank you so very much for being here today. Like I said, you're very inspiring and I really appreciate just the the light and the joy and the hope that you bring to the world and you do it with so much grace and style despite, you know, the things that are difficult and I think you're just a shining example of the light and of truth and I just want to commend you for that and say thank you and say you know again thank you so much for being here today I really really appreciate it (laughs) yes of course thank you and thank you for being a blessing to others this is truly beautiful so thank you Of course. And thank you so much to everybody who has listened to this episode. And if you're feeling as inspired as I am right now, I'd love if you'd share this with a friend or two, and we will catch you next time. If you have a story to share with us, we would love that so much. And I hope your day has been artfully told.